Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 40 of Lab Padre SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. We've got some good info for you today, so let's dig in. After a pair of static fire tests, it was time to return Booster 7 to the launch site, starting with retraction of the booster's ground service equipment panel. The next step was to raise the chopsticks and position them over the booster, which was completed a bit before noon in extra foggy conditions. Shortly after noon, and with the chopsticks fully secured to the vehicle, Booster 7 was removed from the orbital launch mount and pivoted over to the ready and waiting transport stand. Once the locking pins on the transport stand were in place, the booster was carefully lowered the rest of the way down and detached from the chopsticks. Late in the evening, and with the return appearance of fog, Booster 7 was relocated to the former landing pad for an overnight stay. On Saturday afternoon, Booster 7 returned to the build site, rolling down both lanes of Highway 4 at a walking pace before heading back into the Mega Bay for finishing work such as the reinstallation of engine covers. After Booster 7's test campaign, crews began improving the launch site in various ways. New protective shielding continues to be installed on the legs of the orbital launch mount. Late in the afternoon, a new cryogenic gas vaporizer was delivered to the orbital tank farm. In addition to the enhanced protective covers, new subsystems assemblies and their associated plumbing and valves were also added to the orbital launch mount. At the build site in Boca Chica, a ship aft section structural test article was moved from the Sanchez site and placed in front of Mid Bay. RGV Aerial Photography has kindly given us access to their photos for a weekly overview and rundown of Starbase, and we'd like to give them a shout out and our thanks for giving us permission to use their images. Pictured here, the former location of Massey's Gun Range, about four miles from the build site, is a combination storage yard and work in progress testing ground for structural articles and other subscale systems. The northeast side of the build site, centered on a storage yard, is the closest part of the site to Boca Chica Village. The triangular structure in the image, known as Low Bay, has seen much less use lately. The area in front of it, however, is where recently fabricated nose cone segments receive their payload dispensers and forward flaps. To the left are the fabrication tents, where nose cones and ring section subassemblies are produced. The large, white, rectangular building is a storage building, while the large structure near the road is the fabrication building for the launch site infrastructure. The Sanchez site on the opposite side of the previous photo and furthest from the village is where Boca Chica's power plant, air separation plant, a natural gas well, and general storage are located. The new 48,000 square foot tent, referred to as the Sanchez Inventory Tent on the official paperwork, is the latest addition to the site. Further down Highway 4, not far from the Gulf of Mexico, is the location of the launch site which continues to grow and expand with new earthworks in progress on both sides of the facility. The suborbital testing stands at the right side of the image support cryogenic proofing and static fires. Starship 24, held up by SpaceX's LR-11000 crane, is resting on static fire pad B, while the cryogenic proof stand is currently vacant and a close look along Highway 4 near the orbital tank farm gives us a rare view of a special vehicle. Let us know in the comments if you recognize this car. The orbital launch mount, the round structure in the center of the image, is the launch pad for Starship. We can see workers around the structure working to improve the capabilities and protection of the launch pad, as well as the improvements being made to the berms that protect the propellant storage tanks. Also under the launch mount, following the recent 14-engine static fire, workers are replacing the Fondag, a high-strength, heat-resistant concrete that is SpaceX's latest attempt at a material that can withstand static fires of their powerful Raptor engines, since the Martite they used previously sustained heavy damage during Booster 7's 7-engine seven static fire. The expanded areas of the site are still in early phases of development, with grading and drainage being the current focus. Over in Florida, SpaceX's recovery ship, Doug, departed Port Canaveral on Sunday ahead of the launch of OneWeb 15, the first of several Falcon 9 launches for OneWeb. Thursday, at Launch Complex 39A, Falcon 9 was raised vertical less than eight hours ahead of OneWeb 15 launch. Meanwhile, NASA's mobile launcher rolled past on its way back to the vehicle assembly building for repairs and refurbishment following the Artemis 1 launch last month. 
Bob departed Port Canaveral in support of the first Hakutu-R mission, a soft landing on the moon by iSpace. Shortly after sunset, Falcon 9 lifted off from Launch Pad 39A with one Web 15 mission, carrying 40 satellites into a polar low Earth orbit. Seven and a half minutes later, having boosted the second stage in one Web satellites out of the atmosphere, Booster B-1069 returned to landing zone one. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update. Don't forget to tune in to episode two of our new series, Star Word, coming next week. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Lab Padre, out.